Now the RTX 4060 has received a bit of flack since its launch, a 128 bit bus, PCI 4 times 8 lanes, poor generational gains in performance, etc etc, you've heard it all before. But what it has is some awesome power efficiency going on, so the only natural thing to do is slap it into a 13 year old Dell and see if it blows up or not. I hope you enjoy the video. My name's Andy and this is Andy's Tech and today we're going to answer the age old question of what happens when you put a new generational graphics card in an old PC with some janky SATA to 8 pin action going on. So the first test subject is this Dell Inspiring Aron. Uh, it has some cool late 2000s front plastic styling and is on the first core Intel series platform with a Linfield i5-760 which is a 4 core, 4 thread CPU with a base clock of 2.8 GHz and a turbo speed of 3.3 GHz. It even has 8 MB of cache thrown in, so that's got to help a little bit, surely. This is going to go well, isn't it? I've upgraded the system to 16 GB of DDR3 RAM running in dual channel, as every little helps, you know. And it came with this which not only has to power our system today, but also has to power our second unwilling test subject. Apart from that, the system is the same as the day it rolled out of the factory in 2010. And to be honest, I don't even think the side panel had come off until I brought the PC a few months ago. It came with some lovely dust bunnies as well, which is always a nice touch. I've left them in there today for that sort of e-waste aesthetic look that everyone's after at the moment, and I think it just finishes off the PC nicely. So our second unwilling victim, and we have here a brandy new, fresh out of the box MSI RTX 4060, which I picked up on Amazon for £289.95p, and it's probably the fanciest component we've had on this channel. Now I'm on the fence about the RTX 4060, and this is not a review of the card, so we won't go into the full details. But in a nutshell, it has 3072 cores, 96 TMUs, 48 ROPs, with 8GB of GDDR6 VRAM on a 128-bit bus. It has some RTX trickery bits as well, um, but we won't be able to utilise them today. Well, maybe we'll try actually. And it's party trick, it only has a TDP of 115 watts and a perfect pairing for our little i5-760 today. Now this is a purely scientific test today, but in all seriousness, I've done the maths and this opens the door for adding some not too shabby performance to any older OEM system without having to upgrade the power supply. Bottlenecks and janky power solutions aside. I did this with an 8th gen Dell and a GTX 1660 Super and it worked sweet as a nut, though I had a little more faith in the PSU in that system. So the card's installed and all that's left is to push the power button and see if it goes boom. Okay, so we're up and running and I've got into Windows and installed all the drivers for the card. No problems, no issues. Uh, so I thought I'd launch GTA 5, uh, a game any self-respecting uh, Inspirer run uh, would, would want to run. Uh, we're 1080p and I've gone for what the game's just defaulted to, which is 1080p full screen. DirectX 11. Um, all the sliders up, very high settings, pretty much high all the way around. Uh, Anti-stropic filtering, very high, time 16, uh, with the advanced graphic settings off. And now I've never actually tried GTA 5 on a first gen i5 or an RTX 4060. Um, I know there's going to be bottlenecks going on and stuff like that. Um, but let's jump straight into the game, uh, give it a whirl and uh, yeah, see how we do. Okay, so we're in the game now and I've been driving about for a little while now and um, we seem to be doing all right. Um, we're certainly not uh, tanking. Uh, we've got an average of 61 FPS, 1% uh, to 44, 0.1% to 40. Uh, the CPU usage is pretty high, mid 90s to like 100%. 
and our poor little four cores are running at 2.9 gigahertz. Uh, the GPU is doing fine, about 40% usage, uh, pulling about 60 watts and the rest of the system is pulling about the same. So we're pulling about 120, 130 watts from the wall, uh, which is really surprising. Obviously, it's not the best result in the world, uh, but, you know, I didn't even think you could get a, a 60 uh, FPS experience uh, on a first-gen Intel i5. Uh, but I guess this game was released in 2015, I think it was, 2016 maybe. Uh, so this chip would have only been about five years old uh, at, at that point, so it's not surprising really. So I think we've got a pass here for GTA 5. So uh, yeah, let's throw something uh, a little bit more demanding at the system and see how it copes with that. Okay, so we're here in uh, USA 2077. Uh, 20 years after after the launch of Skynet, um, I know that's a that's a different uh, that's a different game. Um, so we lo we loaded the game fine. It would be to no one's surprise you can actually run Cyberpunk 2077 on first first gen Intel uh, without any issues. Uh, so we'll go over the settings quickly. Uh, just high settings, uh, F obviously FSR and all of that upscaling stuff off and all that jazz. Uh, no uh, no ray tracing uh, and these are just the settings that it applies for high obviously I've turned um, the crowds down to low because that's a CPU intensive uh, setting uh, <laughs> we're going to need every little bit of uh, juice uh, we can so let's jump into my save where I benchmark and uh, yeah see how we go Okay, so here we are loaded in. It has actually loaded in, it hasn't crashed or anything. Um, we're getting high 30s on, on the average FPS. 1% uh, is pretty shocking. Uh, the frame time graphs all over the place. Uh, our little uh, i5 is just pegged out at pretty much maximum. 100% usage, high 90s. Uh, the 4060 is actually doing a bit better here than it was in GTA. Uh, it's boosting higher. Than it was and it's drawing a, a fair chunk more power we're at about 53 percent usage 50 percent usage uh, but it's not great it is struggling um obviously really you want a 60 average but i've got a solution to that and that is this okay so it's more of a sticking plaster really but i just happen to have an i7 860 which is a straight swap and will give us four core eight threads and should maybe just help us out a little bit plus it will stress the system a little bit more and it'll be interesting to see what will happen so let's get this slapped in there and jump straight back in okay so we're back in from the same low point uh, i'll start counting the fps uh, we seem to be doing a lot better now we've got these extra threads uh, we're seeing sort of mid to high 40s, touching on 50. Uh, it'll probably drop a little bit while we're in here. Yeah, the GPU utilisation has gone up to like 67, 68%. And uh, yeah, it's not too bad actually. I've had a lot worse experiences in Cyberpunk. And uh, yeah, it's kind of awesome. We're sort of playing this on an, an e-waste Dell that someone was just going to throw away. And, you know, the latest generation of RTX graphics card. Uh, but I do have... Um, we do have one more trick up our sleeve, and that is DLSS frame generation. Where are we? So if I turn this on and apply, let's see what happens now. Okay, so we're at 90s. Awesome stuff. Uh, our CPU utilization has gone up as well, so we're using a bit more of the CPU. Our GPU is still hovering around the same uh, 60, 75. Look at that, guys. We're getting 90 FPS in Cyberpunk 2077 with, an OE with a 13-year-old OEM PSU uh, with an 8-pin SATA power connection. That's just awesome, isn't it? Look at that. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess that brings us to the end of the video. And in conclusion, yes, the RTX 4060 wasn't met with the greatest praise at launch, but in all honesty, I think it's a really good card, but not in the way you'd expect. I mean, we just proved you can basically slap it into any system out there if it will fit, and it just sips power. 
DLSS frame generation as well is a godsend for older systems and will bring a new lease of life to older hardware for years to come. As this card ages and becomes more available on the used market for less and less, it makes the future of budget PC gaming, let's say, interesting. 90 FPS in Cyberpunk 2077 on a first gen Intel Core i7 is just magic at the end of the day, and that's why I love doing this stuff. And after all this, we still have a working Dell and RTX 4060, so what's not to love? So thank you for watching the video, I'd love to know your thoughts about this card and its potential for older, weaker systems and the possibilities of DLSS frame generation down below. Please leave a like while you're there and thank you for all the support and the subs as always. Take care, God bless and hopefully see you in the next one.